And what I say in my uh, commentary is that this beautiful illustration of the protective power of the Spirit in relation to his children, Am Yisrael, the people of Israel in the verse, as they traveled through the wilderness, it reminds me, the author, of the same spirit that hovered, right, Rachaf, the Hebrew word Rachaf is um, parsed out, or the case shows up as Melchefet, uh, past tense, um, uh, uh, of, of the verb, that hovered over the waters at the beginning of creation. And again, we're recognizing that Moshe, I believe, wants us to picture in our mind that God is still enthroned in heaven, and yet he breathes out his spirit, and the spirit is dispatched and hovers over the surface of the waters in this loving fashion, like a like a mother eagle hovers gently over its young, right? Softly hovers before it drops down. I'll put a little graphic of an eagle kind of flying and hovering over its young in my uh, uh, video in post-production. And so I think Moshe wants us to kind of capture that picture in our minds. The same idea that the, that the spirit is both very God, but yet moving from God to where uh, the, the newly formed earth is in this kind of protective fashion, because the earth is kind of still, remember it's void, uh, for, unformed and void, right? Darkness is over the surface of the deep. It's, it's kind of in, um, uh, it's vulnerable, as it were, the, the, the freshly formed earth. It's, it's vulnerable to, to whatever um, darkness uh, that, that might represent, you know, it says dark, uh, unformed and, and void, tohu vavohu which are strange words in the Hebrew. We'll talk about that a different day. But I go on to say that the word translated hovers in our above verse in Deuteronomy is actually the same root as the one used in Genesis 1-2. It's rachaf. And so um, that we can instantly begin to make some kind of connection between the two passages. In fact, I say in my commentary in closing here, by the way, to strengthen the connection between the two applications, right? The one in Genesis and the one in um, Deuteronomy. The Haftara to Breshit is actually Isaiah 42, 5 through 43, 10. And uh, in case you don't know, I actually explain uh, myself here. A Haftara is actually a prescribed reading portion from the prophets and writings and it was chosen by the ancient rabbis to complement the Torah portion. So we have a chosen Torah portion that's read every Sabbath day um, from the five books of Moses. And then in a complementary fashion, a haftarah, which is what the word haftarah is rooted in, the word uh, heftir, which means to complete. It doesn't mean half of a Torah. Com contrary to what your um, pastor might have told you or your Messianic rabbi might have told you, a haftarah is a half of a Torah. That's not what it is comes from the Hebrew word for uh, complete, heftir. A haftarah portion was prescribed to complement the Torah portion, something with the a similar theme or similar wording or something like that. And so what happens, I say in my commentary, is in this passage, um, in Isaiah, in the haftarah portion, we read in the opening 17 Hebrew words, a summary of the first chapter in, where is it? Genesis. Let's read this passage, and then um, we'll call it quits. Oops, let's try that again. I say, and this is a quote from Isaiah's Haftarah portion to Genesis. Quote, Thus says God, Adonai, who created the heavens and spread them out, who stretched out the earth and all that grows from it, right? Sounds like creation. Who gives breath, there's our Hebrew word for spirit, breath, ruach, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. Actually, in this particular passage, the Hebrew word for breath there is probably not ruach, Probably nefesh, I'll have to look it up in a moment. Because otherwise it was a breath and spirit and it would be uh, ruach and ruach. Um, but uh, the reference is Isaiah 42, uh, 5 through 43, 10. And so um, what I'm only, only trying to emphasize in closing is that the spirit of God is present at creation. We're going to see as we begin to study this out that all three persons of the triune God were present during creation. We have a passage in the book of Job that I want to look at next week, where Job says the Spirit of God created me. And he uses a Hebrew word that can be translated as created. It can also be translated just as fashioned or formed. But if the Spirit was present during creation, which he was, Job says the Spirit of God created me, 
Is Job talking about the third person of the Trinity, or is he simply talking about God the Father? Well, the answer is, in one sense, he is talking about God the Father, because in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God is the one who's given credit for going on to create humans, right? Male and female, he created them. And yet, Job says, the Spirit of God created me. Did Job have an inside uh, understanding of how God's Spirit can actually be localized, can be um, um, sent forth in agency fashion, uh, separate fr and from God to do the bidding and the will of God? Perhaps so. I think he did. But we'll look at that next, that next week as we continue reading through this excursus on the um, Holy Spirit, the Ruach within versus Ruach upon. That'll do it now for exploring the Shema discussions on the issues of Trinity. Thank you.